Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO The Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. George Wallace Lover, but we have a shining, glimmering continent. Air Force One touches down at the airport in Dallas, Texas. President Wallace steps off a plane to mine in the sunny Texas sky on his way to the MPP rally. The man is graced by nearly 100 reporters immediately, but he quickly gets into his escort. Just 20 minutes later, Wallace walks up to the podium to greet the sea of specta spectators. Fill in the streets. He recognizes immediately that the complete success in South African war has created the biggest MPP rally of the year. By far, many American flags sprung up from the crowd, including signs with pro-law slogans and even a couple of Confederate flags. God bless them. However, the success of the whole OFN is the topic of the day for President Wallace. All Americans, we meet here today to celebrate the liberation of Africa by OFM forces and the expulsion of the Nazi menace. I'm proud to say the MPP stands with our fine brethren representing the OFM across the world. Our allies are forged together in absolute unity, bearing the torch of freedom against all who seek to destroy us. No matter what, the MPP will continue to represent that fine spirit in America like no one else. Wallace's fervent speech enraptured the Texas masses, but one lingering feeling was falling at his skull. The war was now over, but could an entire half continent be brought to enjoy democracy? Under the Jack there's no hope of prosperity for the Africans, but the Americans even have a better chance than the Nazi overlords. If Central Africa were to collapse, it would definitely burst a victory bubble. Vic Wallace was riding high on the MPP would certainly take a big hit if this African mission failed. The horde of MPP supporters vigorously applauded Wallace as he ended his speech and withdrew it from the podium. Even as his son began to set the name Wallace, could be heard chanting from within the scattered crowd. The true situation in Central Africa tells a different story, of course. Adra marches to victory in Congress. The United States of America, a country founded on the strong, people willing to defend their homes from all threats, foreign and domestic, achieved a level of shock and guard system of defense since the United States defeated the end of the Second World War. President Wall is ever more diligent on his fight to achieve greater powers for the state governments in this country, effectively piece together a bill that passed through the Senate today requiring complete overhaul of the police forces of a country, establishing and requiring for each state to maintain a force of police which are constantly active alongside a local defense division. Serve as a local defense force within the state, while spring regulations regarding uh, the activities of the police and their methods of enforcement. The country as a whole, however, remains heavily divided on the issue. The Wallace administration fi finds the American Defense Reordinment Act, also known as ADRA, to be one of the growing, crowning pieces of legislative accomplishments for Ge uh, President George C. Wallace. The President addressed the nation regarding the success of the act, saying the American Defense Reordinament Act will allow the great people of this union of states to maintain law and order however they see fit. Furthermore, the local defense division of each state will guarantee a level of security and defense not handed down from Washington, D.C. has never been uh, seen before. Establishment of the LDD has already inspired several thousands of applicants looking to potentially enlist to serve their state and country. However, it has grown wild in the country as many find Adra to be a direct violation of the status of the United States as a strong world power. Adra is a stand on the ability for the U.S. Uh, to ascend as global world power, one furious World War II veteran proclaimed in protest in Washington, D.C. How on earth are we meant to see or, or scare ourselves on the world stage when we're so busy beating our own citizens for knowing a little Japanese or German? Several similar protests for both World War II veterans and pacifistic groups have broken down across the country. The United States once more. War uh, cho Choice Welcome back on our next segment. We're pleased to welcome Ms. Phil Schleife, who made a name as a conservative commentator, focused above all else on American interests and foreign affairs. Thank you, and I'd like to thank my husband for allowing me to be here tonight as well. Audience applause. Americans were transfixed by the images coming out of Japanese line in Indonesia this week, as the free Indonesian movement took arms against the government. The declaration was followed by calls for an armed support, heard particularly loudly in Australia, which has reportedly already sent feelers to the White House, about possible military assistance. Ms. Schleife, how should America respond? Uh, well, I'd say that Americans be extremely careful in the wars it chooses to fight. Our obligations to the OFN can't be blank checks because as much as Australia might want the war, it's going to be America that has to finish it. The Australians were our partners in South Africa. Why should America turn Australia away from fighting a threat on its immediate border? I never say we should turn away from Australia, but as far as I'm concerned, how the Japanese or Indonesians choose to kill each other isn't a fundamentally American problem, or one we should really think of solving at the cost of American lives. Even if the free Indonesian government promises a more democratic Indonesia one line of the U.S., I'm not willing to send son our sons that die into a war of choice for some desperate jungle promise from the people we barely know. And let's go to a commercial. Now, I read this last time as well, I believe. And you are a citizen of the state and of the Union. And the dirty state of schooling. Hmm, American education. Look okay, at this one. It's dirty state of schooling first. It's the state of the American education system is being brought to show that not even the well-being of our children is sacred to the perfidious progressive. <clears throat> Overburdened with central Washington interventionism, or their curriculum and even administration disordered to the dictate of the leftist social engineering, we need to let the system down and replace it with a proper American one at once. For the sake of our children, American education. Education is a cornerstone, of course, of America. Our free public education for all people is a wonderful thing and lets America's best and brightest shine. Exactly why I must keep up good old American schools. Separate but equal is the law of the land, like it or not, the Wallace administration will make sure the American kids get a square American education. Also, like we did this all earlier, um, we're trying to invest in these guys, but my God, is it difficult. And then, uh, Colombia, uh, the left wing paramilitaries won, so we're doing okay Glorious with states them. of a glorious union. Within the heart of Georgia, the metropolitan area has been booming and bustling all week. 
President Walls was making a trip down to land itself, and the people of Georgia could not stand to see a president unwelcome. The flash of fireworks, the waving of banners, the sweet smell of barbecues, the trumpeting of marching bands. President Walls was all the rage across the capital of Georgia, and there'd be no calming down until he delivered the speech everyone was waiting for. A speech praising the state of Georgia for safeguarding the rights of true Americans. The noise and ruckus around the city served worse than the headache of President Wallace that morning, but the people of Georgia only offered smiles and handshakes to these patriotic citizens. Finally, in front of the Atlanta City Hall, President Wallace mounted the podium and began to segregate his serenade with a clear good morning to the patriots of Georgia and thank you for coming out on this bright and beautiful day. The crowd cheered heavily for the president. You know, ever since I was a little kid in Alabama, I know one thing America is great and Americans are the country's source of greatness. Everywhere I looked, Hard working men find the workplace on the front lines, doing everything they could for friends, family, and country. Yet, as I grew up, I saw within the lawmakers of Washington, D.C., certain parasitic qualities. They loved that work, but wanted all the profits for themselves. The crowd immediately roared and support my fellow Americans. You are a citizen of a state and a union, and you are Georgians. You do not deserve your greatness spoiled by some bug in a suit in the country's capital. It's my last work, my God given duty to secure for the state of Georgia the rights and liberties it needs to give you all the freedom you deserve. It's not a question of the politicians as to whether you wish to say halt to the Negro at the door, rather, it's a question you ought to decide for yourselves. Your liberty is justice. It is righteous, and I refuse to allow some liberal federalist whack on Washington to deprive you of your rights so we can look good on the Sunday paper. Your Georgians, your Americans, I stand by you. With the conclusion of the president's speech, the people of Georgia were in frenzy of support for the president and his words that day. The bands played, the hamburgers and hot dogs were cooked, and African Americans were thrown out of restaurants. Good for the Georgians. Encourage state level identification. Back in the good old day of America, a man considered himself a man of a state first and union second. A man from Georgia called himself a Georgian, and a Virginia boy took pride first and foremost in the old Dominion state. Why did this ever stop? Let's make the states proud again. A public campaign encouraged the fine folks of our nation to take joy and honor in the home state will bolster the unique American spirit. Perhaps finally drew under those civil rights activists' heads the idea that not everyone in this country is exactly like them. Let's celebrate the diversity of the American nation. Now, as we're doing okay with Africa and stuff right now, um, I think I'm just going to rush through this and get the end of the Civil Rights Act. Uh, could possibly end your presidency early. Well, let's take a look see before we do that, because even with having um, a, 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 a Wallace here, we need, we have five conservatives and four liberals. We need at least five conservatives, so going down this route might be a little crazy, but our state's militias. Since the founding of our great country, many states have maintained their own militias outside the control of the U.S. Armed Forces. These patriotic bands of brothers serve their state governors directly, keeping their homeland safe and responding to local crises. Them should have memory, many of these militias have declined gradually since the end of the war, but now a perfect time to kick them back into gear. Put out some recruitment campaigns, let's get some red-blooded sons of the nations back to protecting the states that gave them birth, and within a few relaxed restrictions, state governors can put militias to work dealing with these current crises. Segregation belongs to the states. Free states rise in segregation levels. Support civil rights counter protests, though. Stop the whining, which I do like, the political power. The uh, government shall maintain segregation, which is more radical. Cost of states' rights. Fully segregate transportation. Greatly upset the northern states. Segregation is the American way, which I don't want to lose any more political power, because we still need some. Um, Long to stay. Stop whining. Um, let's not go full radical for now. As much as I want to, maybe with segregation belongs to the states. Many states want segregation. We hardly agree with them, but we must confess that even with us in charge, the federal, federal government coming down to do all the hard work for them would be slightly, slightly hypocritical to our campaign promises. No, instead, we we'll must ensure that each state has a clear path to implementing segregation in their own terms. And that means ensuring that they have the resources they need to bulldoze any obstacles that stand in their way. From now on, the word of each state's governor shall carry as much authority as within their state as the president's word does to the nation. Supports civil rights counter protests. There are many Americans who reject the civil rights movement. Whether they view the segregation or simply reject the hooliganism of its opponents, these true patriots continue to stand up while enduring appalling abuse from the so called supporters of equality. You must give aid to these forces, such as providing them with police protection and giving them more support to state troops to help put down the violent mobs above opposing them and stop whining. Still, the whining activists march out on our street demanding that the democratically decided will of the people be overturned still. They damage public property, block our highways, and callously beat up good honest Americans. No more, it's time to throw the book at them. Lock them up, smack them down, do whatever needs to be done to shut them up, and if any demonstrator ever lays down in front of my car, it'll be the last car I'll ever lay down. The in hidden lives of the urban world. Philip Hart had really thought about sidewalks what, beyond whether or not the streets had them and if they were paved correctly. He had certainly never thought about what effect they had on social order, yet the book he was reading entitled The Death and Life of Great American Cities, it's in its author, Jane Jacobs, opens his eyes to urban matters he had never considered before. Having previously considered cities merely an uh, agglomerations of people in concrete, Jacobs claimed that sidewalks acted as a stage for an intricate ballet in which the individual dancers and ensembles all have distinctive parts which miraculously reinforce each other and compose a orderly whole. 
The two sidewalks of the Urban Night interacted with the city around, with the quality of the sidewalk entirely a function of what it was attached to it, be it a store, or subway, or park. Even more interesting was Jacob's concept of walkable sidewalks, helping to prevent crime. It is a fact, after all, the criminals are less inclined to operate when in view of a public. Rather than rely on continual police presence, Jacob's asked, why not instead encourage a degree of passive societal surveillance through promoting walkable cities and streets? Through ensuring buildings faced roads and a uh, neighborhood had plenty of watchful, disproving eyes, discouraging any near to wells, heart, heart put the book down. Arthur, please get in touch with Miss Jane Jacobs of New York. Tell her I admire her struggles for community and that I've been reading her book. If it's all right with her, I have quite a few questions about her ideas. They had nodded and hurried off of the, on the errand as Hart continued reading the book. He wanted to be prepared for his meeting with Miss Jacobs after all. A new kind of city? Or an older more. A prime time television show with clapping a studio audience. I'll ask the audience how many of you know a son, husband, cousin, uncle called on to fight for America halfway across the world. The camera didn't pan to the audience, but the host's eyebrows were raised along with a wave of hands in the TV studio. All of us here are welcoming home our men in coffins or in life-altering pain and suffering for a war with the Indonesian. Our clearly cannot ren or rebels cannot clearly win by themselves. I hope Amer Australians are pleased, at least for the cost of thousands of American dead. Indonesia has been flattened and ravaged. The crowd murmurs, some of them angrily. The host motions for Phyllis Schlafy to continue. Bringing our bring our men home. There's no point for them to be in a war that nobody asks them to fight, where violence is a point rather than a means to an certain end. We don't understand the Indonesians, and they don't understand us, what it means to live in a Christian moral society. And they want to find a way to God, then they can do it on their own time. And dime. Applause, unprompted, and prolonged. So we're going to all the through, but we're going to end the Civil Rights Act, because we can. Mr. President, have you thought your, throughout your entire time in office, you've had one single goal, and that's to the end the abomination, known as the Civil Rights Act, which not only tramples upon our God-given American liberty and independence, but also turns our way of life and everything with it. All the groundwork is now in place. The segregation of our bureaucratic trickling. The removal of the opposition of the northern states and all of your other projects, we have the groundwork and we have the support. It's time to remove the desperate work of a misguided man and open the door for Jim Crow. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can do it, but it isn't, it isn't a, you know, election year-ish prediction. We should have enough support if we do, do it a little later, but currently, we have 68. The progressives probably won't do it. The Democrats might go with Republicans. We'll see. Um, we're, we're campaigning for the RD right now, so... Uh, we'll go there, why not? And... We're not at war, it's just a lot of escalation going on. African Quagmire, we're doing okay now. Um, Angola's not looking so good. Angola. I always prefer this one, though. We'll probably do this one instead. We just need more command power, which we almost have, so. Which is a good thing. Um, smoke and mirrors, of course. Jet engines. We'll talk about smoke and mirrors maybe later. Uh, let's see. Who do we want to include, or use, or do, or what? Sure, we'll take some tank stuff that doesn't matter to us at all. At this point, I don't think we'll need any more of these guys. Congress and act daylight like savings times. If you want to read about that, you're right. Remember, kids, spring forward and fall back. Let's take a look, see, because right now, cutting a deal we're not concerned about. Um, we're at 95. I'm just going to get up to 100 experience and just use the rest of this just for the free political power. There's lack, unhappy about lack of segregation. We're happy about states' rights and this voter base. So. Wells wanted to buy weapons. Well, this is a new one. It seems like the Welsh government feels insecure militarily about its position. A completely fair feeling in this world, especially given the walls of Wales is dangerously close proximity to Germany and all the safety concerns that comes with it. They have approached with an interesting request. Weapons, arms, and ammo are arguably the most important and valuable goods in the current world situation. Wales wants them, and we have them, and Wales is willing to pay for them. They have proven to be no close friend of the Germans, and supporting European democracy may help further our influence in Europe, but it must be taken into consideration that these weapons can be used in direct opposition to our goals. Not to mention that any meddling in European affairs like this runs the risk of bringing German attention to it, and we can't be having that now, can we? Actually, this one. Uh, that's not bad. Commit more troops. 10%, 10%, 10%. Honestly, just Angola. Let's do that one first. That's a lot of weekly war support. Keep the weapons, they don't need them. Some weapons, they need They need them more than us. Sure, why not? Not sure what else to research. Maybe just ship stuff? Sure, why not? Look at that, 0 0.05 billion. As we're hitting, uh, hey, but we've got some comments included. What happened to the Adlantoropa project with the update? Was it removed? Yep, it was removed. Unfortunately, it was removed, and I'm very sad about it. Hey, 59% debt to GP ratio, not bad. But yeah, it was removed, unfortunately. I love the Angola Project. Or Angola Project? The Atlantropa Project. Someone says, George Wallace is based. Someone says, Mr. Moklover on his way to play Wallace for the 300 billionth time. <laughs> you betcha, I love George Wallace. Someone says, impeach Wallace and then bring in LeMay. I want to. But we'll see, maybe we will. Maybe in the end we will. As long as we get Philip Hart for this campaign. That's what I really want. Even though George Wallace has a special place in my heart. Ugh. Someone said, why do you support the Reds in Colombia? Um, that is because... 
Uh, they are supported by the OFN, and we kind of have to. So, do I necessarily want to support the Reds? Not necessarily, but you know, already broke the breakdown. So, we'll see. Now we're forced to go down this way. Time to save America. In 1964, tidal wave of Southern Fury crashed down upon the nation and put George Wallace in the Oval Office. As an electoral mandate was simple. Repeal Nixon's intolerable act at all costs. Now it's time for Wallace to make good on his promise for the American people. It's about undo the terrible damage that Johnson, Kennedy, Nixon, King, and all those domestic civil rights terrorists have done in the American way of life. President Wallace will start drafting the American National Traditions Reservation Act. This act will repeal the Civil Rights Act 1962 as well as provide timetables and procedures for southern states to bring again resegregating, and if we have chosen such a path, for northern states to introduce segregation. We'll also implement full segregation for federal institutions and push towards segregation in the armed forces. We'll also give police departments a broad range of powers to enforce segregation, but first you must secure enough support in the Senate to get this ballot to Wallace's desk, and some campaigning to promise compromise may be necessary. So obviously the Nationals like it. So none of these guys like it, and it's no room for the compromise. Um, we'll see. Hinder black voters. We got all the time we need to do. Negotiating for the bill to be easier, a little easier, a little bit easier. So we want to wait to do all this stuff. We want to go center out first. There's private discussions in Congress. Wallace has a lot to say about the Civil Rights Act. He has a heck of a lot more to say about the segment of a country. Oh, even about this please go ahead. Um, well, whose social standing it aims to improve. A good deal of what Wallace has to say about them, however, is better said behind the closed doors than on the Senate floor. President Wallace will meet in private with the moderate congressmen to talk about them into seeing inside of the civil rights issue. All of this will convince these senators to quietly vote. Aye, when the time comes. Convince lobbyists. The First Amendment to the Constitution guarantees every American the right to petition the government to redress of grievances. And there's no greater grievance that has been inflicted upon the American people in the recent years in the Civil Rights Act of 1962. Those bills of fraud, a sham, hoax, and threats of freedom of speech, Assembly Association makes exercise of these freedoms a federal crime under certain conditions. If there's no Civil Rights Act, it's a federal penal code. If the average citizen, um, has been unable to convince the congressman to see that, then we may have to bring in the professionals. President Wallace will flood Congress with the finest lobbyist money could buy. They will then meet with everyone. Wallace can't find time to meet and sell them on the righteous cause or crusade against federal fascist tyranny. They should bring them to the negotiating table and get them to vote yes on the entre. Money in Congress. Changing the leadership of the Marxist caucus. A change in fortunes have rocked the Marxist caucus as the MPP have successfully triumphed over the RDC, galvanizing the support base around blank. The support, popular support of the MPP has grown significantly as a result of the victory, and may be indicative of a large electoral upset in the party's future. Numerous revelers took the streets in the major cities of the Marxist caucus, caucus utterly exulting over the MPP's upset in the polls. A strong showing. Okay. A fascist monster has risen up in this nation. It has invaded the government. It has invaded the news media. It has invaded the leadership of many of our churches. It has invaded every phase and aspect of the life of freedom-loving people. With its ACLU fundraisers and its Japanese Hitlerite backers, it has bought and paid for the countless congressmen who are holding up the passage of Antra. It has fight fire with fire. President Wallace will make it uh, rain on Capitol Hill. Money will flow into Congress from patriotic citizens and supporters. After all his lobbying efforts, this may well be the final push we need to secure enough votes to pass Antra and save American property rights and human rights for once and for all. Um... Trend make bills more likely to vote for the bill. I like that. Hinder black voters. Those spineless cowards in the RDC have had one foot in this freedom loving American patriotism and the other in liberal fascist tyranny ever since Thurman led the Southern Exodus in 1952. They may be trying to toe the middle line, but they know in their hearts that as soon as their coalition does away with the poll tests, the Negroes will thank them for their pussyfoot and by bowing a straight RDC ticket. But President Wallace says, forgive and forget Christian. Uh, the Democrats want to repent of their obstinance and support Antra, then they'll make sure that their seats are secure. President Wallace will encourage governors to ruthlessly enforce the rigged literacy tests that keep black Americans away from the polls. Conservative congressmen will be informed that another so-called Freedom Summer will see them thrown out of the Capitol, and this fact will hopefully inspire them to vote for Antra. Minutes to midnight. With all due respect, Ambassador Fukuda, the evidence we have is utterly indisputable, the President said. America expects a minimum of formal apology, substantial compensation for our losses, and a total withdrawal of all Japanese troops from Indonesia. The Japanese ambassador was indignant. What lies? We are innocent. Us, apologizing to you. Pa, it should be reversed. You accusing us of killing your man. What is the clearest day you are murdering our soldiers? But forget it. This is a waste of time. Before the president could respond, the ambassador got up to leave, slamming the door as he went out. After the ambassador slammed the door shut, President George Wallace out of breath, he didn't even know he was holding. The meeting was much more tense than anything else he had in a while, but there was good reasons to be worried. But now even the general public was aware that both American and Japan had soldiers in Indonesia. Both were blissfully unaware of the deeper implications, with uh, an airy uh, soul s s noticing. What was once unthinkable had become a reality. American and Japanese soldiers were shooting each other, killing each other. Of course, they couldn't say that out loud, but the presidents, both of them, and the ambassador realized what would happen if they did. It'd be a race to the top of escalation ladder where the only prize was nuclear annihilation. Even as their armies were slaughtering each other with the destructive, all the destructive force that could only modern war could bring both sides out of pretending it was an actual war. There they were, American Japan, locked in this uncomfortable pa de do. I was hard to worry about how long this facade would last. Also, I'm not concerned about this. I mean, if I have these cons commands, I will. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. Um, we'll make sure we, we do pass our stuff. You know, 
Honestly, depending on how long this takes, 21 days, uh, get back in your place. Yeah, repeal the arts act. We'll see how long we take. We might actually get more support from this. Seven more, less Democrats, more Republicans. If we get more from the Nationalists, we might actually be able to line it up, but maybe not, but we'll see. I just don't do a focus. So. But in the meantime, we are here having a little bit of fun, seeing if we can send some volunteers down here. Three divisions, not bad. Um, you have the most experience, so. There you go. Uh, wait, why did I put five? There you go. You want to send three. There we go. Yep, and they've all put into warfare. Three wings, but only 200 in total, huh? That kind of sucks. Not gonna lie, that kind of sucks. Get some fighters here, they should be fine. And then, where's our cast? Ooh, here we go. Bomb them. All this stuff, conflict status, not concerned about it. I'm more concerned about this one. Once we send our guys down there and we do well, <clears throat> that's all that matters to me. So all the divisions should do well down there. Yes, sir. As we do have a cup of coffee here as well. Fine, some coffee. Oh, I drink too much caffeine, but I love it. I love it. Hello. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to come around here, and we're going to push all the way through here first. Or we can go through here first. Maybe you come up here first. This is different because this is I've never done it like this before. You know, let's go this direction. Just because I'm not used to this. Just going through here. It's fine. We have three divisions, it doesn't really matter. I think we should be able to win no matter what. There you go. Balls are updated. Very nice. Mid down. Good. And there they go. Ventilate well. Have you heard of the jets over oh, overhead in Indonesia? You drop to the desk and hold your breath. If you're lucky, you'd still be breathing a minute later. If you weren't, then you were struck with whatever you had in your lungs as the oxygen and the air would combust or be displaced by styrene vapors. Or <clears throat> if you were lucky, you might pass out and die in incidents. Incinate, say. But heat, the roaring flames unleashed by napalm, looking down any buildings of bone and life would make that difficult. Anyone would want to scream as they felt their skin burst and blacken to expose the cooking flesh inside. But if they did, they might roast from the inside out or choke on noxious fumes. No, all the residents of a Sumatran village, militarily worthless until an arbitrary shift in the line of contact. Could do was hold their breath and run. Run away from the streets of blaze and scorched alleyways towards cool, colder and cleaner air in the wooded outskirts. They discovered as they streamed out of the hellish prison in a bloody mingled line that a sufficient ventilation brought them relief. Ventilation, measured by bullet calibers and exit wounds. You know, I'm, I'm also just like earning us now five. What if I just stopped campaigning? We're doing this as well, too. Let's we'll see what happens, you know. I just won't be successful with George Wallace. He's like my national hero. Nice. Do they actually even need folks here? Nah. They don't. Nope. Because I have played as Indonesia before, both sides. And sometimes it's really just not easy. Whee. Ah, yes. Very good. We have five resources. You know, I'm going to say screw it. I'm here for the money. So. 1975. 2% less spending factor. I can get on board with that. A curious visitor. A curious uh, development has arisen from the State Department. Earlier today, Ambassador arrived in Washington seeking to discuss diplomatic overtures. Our seeing an emissary is not entirely unusual in and of itself. The man who approached us today was anything but the usual kind of ambassador, of course. <clears throat> he claimed to be an emissary on behalf of King Rurik II, Tsar and Autocrat of all Rus, and his realm is supposedly to be based out of a major city in the Russian region of the central Siberia. This claim can be corroborated with the reports from the CIA, who confirmed that there has been indeed a dramatic shift of the balance of power in the region. While they do not have a clear picture of the situation, the implications suggest that this Rurik II may very well become a powerful new player in the Russian game. Monarchist movements are nothing new to Russia, but... So far, I've been unable to find any man by the name of Rurik who holds a claim to the throne. Stranger still was Ambassador's experience. Diplomatic officials who were present to witness the meeting described his attire straight out of a Renaissance fair and worthy of a Halloween costume. 
establishment of diplomatic relations with his Rook could provide much needed information on the dire situation in Russia, and his regime could possibly serve as a key partner for potential strategic interests in the region after all. Who are we to turn down friendly ties in this time like this? On the other hand, more skeptical minds in the State Department are suggesting that this whole thing is merely an elaborate hoax and should be ignored. Sure, why not? Sure, screw it. Why not? And happy August, everybody. Happy, happy August. Let's see what we can do. Let's go in. Oh, or maybe not. Here. Random questioning. Keeping at the security checkpoint scattered throughout the cities was an hours long affair to such an extent that the Indonesians in line wondered if anyone was going to be out through at all. The line snake for minute, minute increments, giving the observers enough time to observe the surrounding. They all saw the sergeant take a double, then triple take at a cro couple crossing the threshold of the checkpoint before yelling at them to halt and raise their heads. Several soldiers whipped towards a couple, raising their rifles as the two shakily obeyed. Another soldier told everyone to step back, shouting suicide best over the disgruntled groans of the uh, crowd. The man was roughly, was roughly patted down, and as every appendage was squeezed, and man had it before he to the ground and held a gunpoint. The man, the woman, was offered no more delicacy, though she was offered the decency of an inspection inside the checkpoint booth. The crowd pretended not to hear her crying in humiliation. Just where he came from, the sergeant's fist smacked in the detailed man's or detained man's face with a sickening crunch. Just who you live with, a rifle butt slammed the man's stomach, doubling him over. Tells everything the crowd sees as two soldiers grab the man by his armpits, dragging him into a waiting van. The wailing the woman, well, my apologies, the wailing woman beside him. They watch as the van sped away into the distance behind the lower bayonets of the checkpoint guards. Next, nice. Good. Alright, so we can wait for this stuff because our, our research is almost all done. You only click on it once or it'll, like take everything else away, so. There we go. Eight, no room, no room, no room. God dang it. We'll see. Now that we're on a lackluster campaign, good campaign. Mission still five. Here, we can run here. Segregate the voting booths. Voting is American right, and segregation is American way, so segregated voting booths are as American as apple pie. If blacks have no business uh, using the same theater of entrances or cemeteries of white people, they can hardly expect to use the same polling stations as their pilot or compatriots. They should, and should their polling booths be inaccessible, that's hardly a problem. President Wallace will step up his efforts against black voters. Black polling stations could be two hours away from their homes and located within a condemned building, but if they can't make it there to vote, it's their fault. They should ensure further conservative support for ANTRA by ensuring Southern conservatives senators have nothing more to fear from black voters. A madman's request. The siege of overture from King Rilla II, clearly, uh, encouraged by our attitude towards the so-called kingdom, as diplomats have reached out through official channels to make a request. There's no doubt now it's not a mere hoax, but a legitimate effort by Russian faction to strengthen ties with the U.S. The king wishes to attract American business to his growing rum and wants to make us a significant uh, financial investment in the central uh, Siberia to uh, pique the interest of our business and its potential benefits. This request is not to be taken lightly and represents <clears throat> an important crossroads for relations with the bizarre Russian regime. While the Russian diplomats assure us that investment would be of great benefit to both parties, some of our economists are not nearly as idealistic, and consider the prospect of a waste of consider the prospect a waste of America's valuable resources. How shall we respond? Sounds like a good idea to me. Growth increase. Sure, I like growth. It's all about growth, right? Right. You guys are doing very well. Um, who else do we have to beat up down here? I think that's fine. Is that, I think that's uh, Muscovine, maybe. It probably is, in all honesty. Yeah. Ah, uh, I've got to go all the way through here, then. It's fine by us. Fine, fine, fine by us. And they're liberating Muscovine, too, which is going to take forever. But look at our debt. 207 billion. I mean, obviously, our GDP could be higher, but still. Superseding circumstances. Oh boy. Ah, oh, the crowd had already been gathered for several long hours outside the police station. By the time the foreign colonel arrived, the police straining to hold their court on as the officer hurried inside. Everyone knew what had happened. The city far behind the front, and its bars and, cl and clubs had been terrorized by a foreigner who took offense at every perceived slight, or sometimes at nothing at all. Drunkenness was excuse used at first, used, as all the foreign soldiers and sailors won't, there won't to be. But when a pattern emerged, some doubted that the culprit even needed a sip before wailing on the target du jour. Today they found him bloody behind a dumpster, mounted upon a blackened and bruised heap that had long since ceased moving. 
He had sent five more men to the hospital as they tried to restrain him before the police had arrived and had whisked him away. The mob demanded justice. How many other men and women had been sent to the hospital on account of this monster? But the police held them back, not because they wanted to, but because the police co commandment had been told in no uncertain terms that they were superseding circumstances. The crowd roared in fear as a colonel, foreign colonel emerged from the building with the brute following him behind, a psychotic smirk plastered on his face. They pushed again against the police line as the foreigners clambered into the waiting car, screaming as they re retreated into the distance. Just as war uniform in Indonesia, except for those in another uniform entirely. Just one outrage amongst many. Very cool. Borman's doing what he's doing best. Sovereign just causing me to this, please go ahead. Oh boy, a strong, strong showing. Nice. I love extremism. It makes me happy. Um, Angola. These are all going up a lot, which is nice. Napalm use? I love napalm. Yeah. Fried economic aid? Yeah, we'll do that one. Oh, look at that! We got nine! We don't have to use 922 Democrats! Oh, yeah! I love the Democrats and a quarter of the Republicans and uh, the Nationalists. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. I knew the Democrats would want to vote with us. Just in case. Let's save it here. Um, well... Let's read about the next focus first. Detain possible leaders. MLK Jr. has been called has called Wallace the most dangerous racist in America. The false and incendiary remark. He personally has done more for the Negro than any other individual. Our efforts are key to a, fi a fight, preserve constitutional government and state sovereignty, not to hurt our Negro citizens. Whites and colored have lived together in the South for generations, peace and equanimity. They have each prefer their own pattern of society with their own churches and schools, which history and experience have proven are best for both races. All the shows that we're having lately are processed because of the outside factions influenced agitators like the so-called Reverend King, the NAACP, and the ACLU, and all the Japanese Nazi money interest back in them. That ends here and now. President Wallace would launch Operation Defending Freedom, an FBI offensive that would arrest and detain major subversive leaders and surgical strikes from coast to coast, MLK, James Farmer, Roy Wilkins, Abraham Heschel, Gus Hall, Bobby Seale, and anyone on Wallace's blacklist. Obviously, they can't be charged with anything more than that will stick, but detaining them will for, for a while hinder their ability to instigate black voters in the elections. Conservative RDC members should be certainly be a grip for our efforts to secure their seats and be more poised to support Antra. Mafia money, Stonewall Jr. wondered about that, please go right ahead. We're going to open up them choirs, huh? Mediocre campaign, that's suck, bro. I'll go to them too. New England? I'll go, kind of go back to New England sometime. New England's nice. Expenses all heck, but it's still nice. Oh, would you look at that? Blue on blue, the soldier was a quiet one, everyone said. Don't didn't talk with, other, with others much. Never told anyone what, where it was from or why I joined the army. Not that anyone asked. All anyone cared about now was in Indonesia, especially his foreign advisors, was that you could pick up a gun, point, and pull a trigger. It was good at that, everyone agreed. Good enough to earn himself a clap on the back <clears throat> and free drinks at the pub. And from the advisors, they were the only ones with enough money for that. He drank it first, enough to put, on, put out an elephant, earning himself two days' punishment detail. They didn't even touch alcohol at all. The advisors were happy. They told him that he'd gotten used to the killing just like them. When you could enjoy the full use of your senses, even after watching a montage of death and gore, then you knew you were normal again. <clears throat> Ever born, and the soldiers would listen to a readout of the uh, changes along the line of contact. Mostly it was localized to a specific, specific sector, but so-called. But every so often a faraway city's capture or destruction would be mentioned. A reminder, the officers said, of what they were fighting for. It had been a day as normal as any other as the soldiers filed out, leaving the foreign advisors to discuss the day's objectives before the soldiers in question blew their brains out with a service rifle, painting the tent red before adding his own blood to the mix. Snuffed out just like the hometown nobody knew. I also keep doing temp tax hike because we are doing a good job cutting down um, all that's there, so. Oh, good God. But yeah, it's September 17th. We're going to detain him. Get back in your place. Men like MLK Jr. and Ralph Abernathy styles themselves as the so-called men of God guided by Christian principles, but I, George C. Wallace, am serving Christ as well. And I call upon these men to consider two important passages in Scripture, Deuteronomy 32.8 and Acts 17.26. When the Most High divided the, the, to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked about their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands in 1964. The American people confirmed an immortal truth, the separation of races that God gave a mandate to mankind. It was not President Wallace who first put up signs saying, White's only and colored only. It was our father in heaven. No, and another God hating fascists and Germany, Japan, the tyrants of the Supreme Court, the spineless atheists in Congress, nor the satanic Burgundians and the liberal elites funding them can erase what God has decreed. The Civil Rights Act is ready to be melted down like a modern golden calf, and the miracle will return to God in the way of life that he ordained. God gave our Negro citizens a proper place, and the entree will return to them where they truly belong. 
We can do this one, and we'll do that one as well, because that should be enough time. 18 days left. You know what? Can we cancel this one? Let's cancel this one. Because I want to get this right up with the election, so. Let's get back in your place, and then we can do the other one, and then the voting will be done. Repeal the Civil Rights Act. In 1962, the President of the U.S. signed into law the most monstrous piece of legislation ever enacted by the United States Congress. It was a fraud, sham, hoax. Never in the history of the nation had so many human and property rights had been destroyed by a single enactment of the Congress. It was an act of tyranny. It was an assassin's knife stuck in the back of liberty. And today, God willing, you'll be shredded and thrown into the wasteland of American history. Entre will come to the final vote today. All of the Wallace's preparations to secure the repeal of the CRA will be tested. If it passes, Wallace will cement his legacy as the savior of the South. If it doesn't, his failure will never be forgotten in Dexy. Repeal and Civil Rights Act will unleash a storm of racial unrest, and the progressive bloc of the MPP will scream bloody murder. The fact might not survive Entre, neither may Wallace's own presidency. None of that matters. This moment is what Wallace has fought for ever since Nixon signed that curse. Acted by God, he shall not be denied this victory. Eia eacta est. Good, 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 good. I mean, upgrades? As much as like, I'm not sure. Is this is elite infantry here. So it should affect them. So we're going to go with that. We can do it. We can do it. We can repeal the Civil Rights Act. Just go in. Your plane should cover you. Right? No? Wait, why are you down here now? Oh, a little laggy, but we're getting to October. 206.92 is not bad. 205 is even better, though. There you go. There you go. Now we should be bombing the living crap out of them. Should be fine. You know, they're not reinforcing for some reason. Get back in your place. Increase the MPP unity significantly. Alright, so even without them, we're still good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's the one I want to do next. And then... American education, the beacon of democracy, freedom, and business. America is the gra last great nation on earth to preserve the ideals of freedom and democratic government. We have overall success in regard to the mightiest economy mankind's ever assembled, forged maintained by American banks and American industries. Free from the state's menacing corrupt, they have risen to the great heights and earned greater profits year after year until soon America surpassed and then utterly dwarfed the old t world tyrants and their many inefficiencies. It can't be said enough, without its unflinching dedication to free markets and free enterprise, our nation will have been consigned and footnote in the knowledge of history long ago. As a new president enters the White House, so too must America must chart a new course for economy. For thinking men such as you and I, there exists only one option. Promote American business at home and abroad, whatever the cost. Only them is American dollars and American businessmen travel from Washington to all four corners of the earth. Unimpeded, unburdened, will our nation be incapable of continuing the fight for the ideals we so deeply cherish in the decades to come? You bet your boy. Ah. Just gonna get ready for a fill apart run, too. And also do a lot of the economy stuff out of this, too. Civil rights. Who needed civil rights? Who needs rights? They're, they're, they're poor farmers. Just blitz them. 87% nice. Oh boy. Here we go. Kennedy's legacy destroys Antra and Congress. We have enough votes, so just in case, we're going to save. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. Right before the election as well. And Entre soils Kennedy's work through Congress. The United States of America land accounts for prosperity and this variety. It found itself in your political standstill following the events of the federal government today. There within the Congressional Halls of Washington, D.C., the Senate, moved on by the prerogative of President George C. Wallace, proved the American National Traditions Reservation Act, also called Entre, or appeal law against the Civil Rights Act, nullifying its legal effects within the United States. Countless citizens look on in the future with fear and awe as the social sphere of the United States stands completely unchanged. And with some saying for the better, others saying for the absolute worse. President Wallace and the entirety of the cabinet have issued full celebration regarding the victory within the Congress, and the issue of the existence of the CRA was one of the initial is issues of the President Wallace's campaign and eventual success of becoming the president. The United States is a land of culture, tradition, and moral values. Meanwhile, obstructing Americans' rights to enact these pillars of culture, such as segregation, as a direct obstruction of the American dream itself. Maintaining segregation and putting an end to the Civil Rights Act was a drastic issue. I declared it as resolved within my presidency, and resolved the issue I did. As the end of the Civil Rights Act is a crowning achievement for all my administration and I. Recent reports indicate marches all throughout Montgomery, Alabama, cheering the Alabama president and successes against the Civil Rights Act. 
Others however maintain a sense of terror and dread as they think about the future without the Civil Rights Act. With notable instances of entire families of African Americans locking themselves away in their homes. America is our home, just as any of the red blooded American gets to say it's their home. And it seems that the head of our household has decided to cast away one of the house's children from safety and security, said one African American worker, who was not found eating at his favorite restaurant in fear of what would not be able to come back in a long, long time. I want the name Wallace flying across country. Now, we're not going to uh, click this yet. What if I say, let's get to the election first, and then we'll click that? You know? Very nice. You, me, and they don't need they don't need rights. That's the economy. That's the economy. Gosh darn it. We did it, my friends. We did it. Still stable. It's going down a little bit more, but whatever. Um, Sixty-eight, huh? Power train here. Power trains. Why not? Because we can. Come on. Three days. Oh, send elections. Another royal request. Another request for financial aid. Has been sent away from a strange fellow called King in Russia. This time it appears he's trying to undergo some kind of effort to industrialize his realm and needs help in doing so in a timely, efficient manner. After we come in, Rook seconds under the pressure that certain experts in the matter of industry who currently reside in the U.S. could put their talents to use helping with his industrialization drive. He requests that we send home to Central Siberia to support these efforts and assures that we will be well compensated for our show of good faith. While his words will surely help strengthening relations with Rook's second regime and continue to support our friendly face in Russia. Some of our officials have pointed out the situation in Russia is so quite dangerous and sending Americans to this war-torn country would put their lives in unnecessary danger. What's it called? We can have whoever it needs for now. But, um, so let's take a look at the elections. 12-9. Oh, we got f Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Alright, so... Are we seriously at 75? 50? 50 nationalists, 25 progressives, there's 12 Republicans and 11 Democrats. Well, my friends, I think we've done a tremendous job in this episode. But unfortunately, I must end it here. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll see what else we can do with Wallace as we push forward, push forward, to see what else we can do with USA TNO. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.